Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to another episode of Voices for Excellence. I am your host, Dr. Michael Connor, CEO and founder of the Agile Evolutionary Group and proud host of VFE. And today's guest is near and dear to my heart, one of my good friends. I call her the bestie. Uh, she is a, definitely a sister uh, in the education field, a strong, strong proponent uh, for community, right? And you're going to see that's going to be a part of our, of our conversation today. Uh, she is in the great state of California, Inglewood up to no good as Dr. Trey and Snoop Dogg would say. But Ms. Jessica Ochawa is the Executive Director of Communications and Community Relations for the Inglewood Unified School District in Inglewood, California. And just most recently, my sister, my good friend, my bestie, just got on the CALSA uh, Board of Directors. Congratulations with that. Uh, she is just a staunch advocate for equity for our families and for our kids. So without further ado, it is an honor to have Ms. Jessica Ochawa on Voices for Excellence. Bestie, you may have to get Good morning, good morning, Bestie, good morning. I'm humbled, I'm excited uh, to be here with you today, uh, being part of your podcast, uh, Voices for Excellence, and so um, truly appreciate this opportunity to really be able to speak on a topic that is very dear um, to my heart. So I'm excited. I, I you know, I need to dive in, and so um, it's 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 a pleasure. Now, one thing, right? Good minds think alike. We are only three thousand one hundred miles apart, and we got the same color on. Almost down to the shirt. There we absolutely, listen. absolutely. No communication at all to no my list. Communication. No, no communication. Great minds think alike, right? Absolutely. <laughs> there we absolutely. go. So, so good to have you on VFE. So let's get into the podcast, right? And I really want to focus on the merit of work that you have completed in the Los Angeles area, what you have done. Uh, for Inglewood Unified School District, uh, specifically in alignment to your strategy around community and integrating, I like to say, moving from this whole child to whole school to this whole community approach in the AC stage of education. So I think that this is very, very important because it's going to be an educational imperative when we look at strengthening the education outcomes for kids, community has to be an integrated thread within that strategy. So great to have you and for you just to expand on your expertise. But the first question, right? The work you've done has just been extensive in the Los Angeles area, specifically your community outreach strategy, which I think is a model across the country, but specifically your, communicate, your community outreach strategy in Inglewood. You are an award-winning educator in the state of California as the Executive Director of communi uh, Communications and Community Relations for the Inglewood Unified School District. But you, Ms. Jessica Ochawa, what, songs what song defines your excellence and equity stance in education, right? And, and I want to hear this because I got my pen ready to write this down because what song would education stakeholders, right, and leaders describe Ms. Jessica Ochawa as a leader in the ecosystem? It's funny that you asked. I love music. Um, and so, and really kind of thinking about what song defined me, um, I just, my mind was spinning, right? Um, I listened to all genres. And when I say all genres, all genres in the books. And so as I was kind of just surfing, I guess, the various songs that I, I enjoy listening to, um, there's one song that kind of came to mind and I needed to li just listen to it again. And I said, this is where it hits home. And it's actually a gospel song um, that you actually listen to when, you know, you're at church or whatnot, right? You're in your safe haven. And it's called Sanctuary. 
and uh, it's a beautiful song. It it's it's phenomenal. Um, it brings peace. Um, it just brings peace to the mind, um, and it really reassures you um, your purpose of why you're doing what you do. And there's um, part of the uh, a section in, in the song, the lyrics, that says, Lord, prepare me to be your sanctuary. And for me, that really hits home because I feel that your sanctuary is where your heart is. And for me, it's serving uh, my purpose with true heart um, and humility. And, and that's how I serve on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, you serve with heart. You have to love what you do. But there's this level of humility that needs to live within you um, to be able to stay grounded to your purpose and why you do what you do. And so that song uh, really resonated in me um, for the work that I do. Now, as far as my fellow colleagues, would they um, would they agree? Oh, possibly, right? Uh, I, I consider myself someone who is, uh, I kind of stay under the radar, I'm pretty quiet. Um, but at the same time, I allow my work to to be my voice or be my sound. And for me, ultimately, at the end of the day, um, I just want to make sure that we impact our youth, um, that we change the trajectory for our youth, and that we empower our youth to be able to see their true potential, to see the value that they bring forward um, in order for them to really ignite their hidden potential to impact, you know, the greater world. And so for me, it's it's understanding my sanctuary, um, serving with true heart and true purpose. And that's just a constant reminder that keeps me grounded, um, allows me to continue to be boots on the ground to really understand and truly impact the community in which we serve. Um, and by doing that is having those relationships, having those connections. And with that, um, you have to be present. And so that that's a song that really resonated in me. Um, highly recommend it. Um, it's it's heartwarming. And um, I love it, to be honest with you. So I told you I was going to give you a little twist. <laughs> you gave a look. You know, now the million dollar question is, what song would you have thought, you know, that really, you know, resonates, you know, in you as far as, like, hey, this song totally reminds me of Jessica. Is there one uh, for you? Uh, well, I didn't even think about. You know what? Let me come back to you. At I'm the kind of kids. I've never thought about it. You know, I was like, wait, a song that resonates. You know, I mean, that kind of speaks to the work. I was like, wow, that's that's pretty deep. I never thought about it that way, right? Right. Um, right. The first song, the first thing that came to mind was graduation, right? I love graduations. That's uh, one of my favorite culminating ceremonies uh, when it comes to public education, and because it's it's where our students, you know, I mean, that's where their chapter ends, um, and they're starting a new chapter in their life, and it's a culmination of almost thirteen years, right, in public education. And so, I needed to think about it a little bit more, and I was just like, you know what? What song really, really, and I thought, and I thought about a few songs, right? You know, some hip hop army, uh, yeah. uh, going to the land next. Uh, but at the same time, I said, you know what? Sanctuary has always been a song that I've always enjoyed listening to while being in church. And I listen to it when, you know, I have to recollect myself, my thoughts. Um, sometimes we have those, we need to use that. We have to remind ourselves why we do what we do, so. You threw me your box. I got you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to think about this and I will definitely I'm going to uh give I, I gotta think about that because Jessica, you got me uh you got you got me tongue twisted now because I gotta be like, okay, what is it? I was thinking maybe what kind of because the work, right? And I'm looking at the individuals and the impact they've had within the music industry. And when I think about your work uh, in alignment to community uh, for community outreach for community impact, um, with regards to ensuring access and opportunity, uh, when we look at let's say this isolated thread of uh, homelessness, right? I think of the 
I think of artists of like the Tina Turner's of the world, the Whitney Houston okay. world, because they had impact in that. So I got to go down, you know, the the Whitney Houston, Tina Turner uh, list to see what that song is, because, you know, I see the influence that they've had and the influence that you have in uh, the Los Angeles area, specifically in Englewood and how, and I want to bring it up, you're leveraging the Olympics to bring or revitalize, right, Englewood. And right now we're going to unpack that, obviously, but congratulations, right, on you being elected as a board member of HALSA, uh, Region 5 Director. Yay, there we go, all the way around, right, the congratulations, right? So, but now, going back, right? Your entry plan. When you were, um, when you became executive director for communications as well as community relations, you had an entry plan, right? Your your 90-day entry plan is infamous in whatever position. The you business plan, the business model. <laughs> <laughs> but now as a new board member, right? What does that entry plan look like when you be uh, uh, formally, when you formally matriculate into the role in July? And what are your plans to strengthen the mission and organizational objectives of CALSA? No, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, first and foremost, uh, we must recognize leaders who have been and will be instrumental partners um, in leading CALSA Familia um, and with those who have come before us and will come after us, right? And so really understanding the legacy that has been built thus far and what can we do to continue to carry that legacy uh, forward to really be able to create an even stronger um, playing field for future leaders um, within Gaza. Um, it's really, really instrumental um, to understand um, collectively as, as a board what everyone's visions are. Um, they can be very different, they can be very similar, but ultimately collectively, how do we move the works forward? And for me, it's um, my focus is is Region Five, right? Part of my work um, as a new board of directors to lead our local Angelinos, which I am super excited about. Um, whether it's building capacity um, in membership within Galsa, um, building capacity within our leaders, uh, whether provide, providing professional development, um, an area that I've really been um, spinning some ideas is we have a lot of um, renowned authors uh, within the Calisa community. Um, how do we share the work that they're doing um, within their spaces, within their roles, um, where they've been able to to publish the work and help support leverage that professional development for others? But at the same time, how do you inspire leaders to be able to share their craft, their knowledge, their experience? and be able to bind it in, in a book to be able to share it with, with the greater community, uh, whether it be in LA, you know, I'm expanding out to California, nationwide, worldwide. And so I'm really looking at different ways to really be able to um, expand um, the capacity within Calsa, um, the visibility within Calsa, um, tapping into our local media outlets. So there's a lot of great work that is being done um, within the Casa Familia, but also our members at their school districts, right? Um, how do we amplify their voices um, to be able to truly showcase the work that is being done um, that ultimately at the end of the day, it inspires others. Um, and so there's a lot of great work um, that will be done, that has been done. And ultimately um, at the end of the day, it's gonna be a collective effort. It's a coalition of minds um, to really be able to move um, the mission and the vision of GAPSA forward. And so I'm super excited to uh, be diving in uh, starting July 1st um, and really being able to to drive that strategic plan, not only um, for the state of California um, with the GAPSA um, community, but also for um, for the LA County region. So, Yeah, congratulations on that. I'm super, super proud of you. Uh, for that. And then uh, just you highlighting how honoring the legacy is so foundational. And, you know, every single member, whether it be the current president right now, uh, Xandra Galvin, the president-elect, Dr. Roxanne Fuentes, 
um, you hear that theme even across the board of directors with regards to honoring the past and honoring uh, the legacy. Uh, the last, I, I believe it was the last uh, conference that I attended with Cal. So the whole theme was around honoring the legacy. And there were, Jessica, uh, educational giants. I mean, educational giants that was at the uh, last Institute with Calsa. And congratulations on that. I hear a lot of focus on capacity. I hear a lot of focus on now. This is a new uh, voice thread. And I want you to expand on this is agency, right? And that is so important because your work in alignment with that, the voice, right? The collective voice of the people and around capabilities and capacity expansion, foundational for the expansion and the growth of Calsa. And good luck to you uh, with that. Very, very proud of you. But I want to expand on uh, a thread, right? Uh, a, a, a variant within your last answer. And it's around voice. It's around ensuring that voice is a part of that, as you stated. Uh, you elicited it so well that the agency, the collective agency, is so important to lift CALSA as an organization. But I want to bring it back now to your expertise, right? And this is me, you know, subjectively and objectively saying is that you are one of the national experts when it comes to community, right? And I consider you a czar around this whole community approach and education now more than ever, where we saw the inequities at a multitude of different levels in the DC stage of education during COVID. Now, as we move seamlessly, or not seamlessly, but we move into this AC stage of education, and we know that in order for Generation Alpha and Generation Z to be successful, whether it be in the education sector or even in the economic demand community, is going to play a critical aspect in that. You have successfully engaged various community and national entities to strengthen the equity work in the Inglewood Unified School District. Now, as I said at the outset, moving from this whole child, whole school, whole community approach in the AC stage of education, right, to meet the generational needs of Generation Z and Generation Alpha. Now, Jessica, tapping into your uh, your 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 expertise at a multitude of tiered levels when it comes to community, right? If I am a leader within any thread of the education ecosystem, even at the school base or classroom level. How do I create a whole community approach in alignment to achieve the desired outcomes for families and students that we serve? Absolutely. And so first and foremost, um, relationships are important. Mm -hmm. um, relationships are key um, to success in our reality um, and being present, um, being boots on the ground. Um, to be able to understand how to um, approach the whole child, the whole student, or the whole school, the whole community, um, it's really important that you you emerge yourself to the community in which you are serving. And by doing so, it really allows you to understand if there is any, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, disparities that exist um, in in the system um, within itself, right? Within the ecosystem um, of the school community. Um, what resources are lacking for students to ensure that they're successful, but also their, fam their, fa their families and the communities in which they serve? Um, is there any red tape that is um, stopping um, the ability for growth? Um, for those communities, for those schools, for that ecosystem, for those students. And I'm a firm believer that sometimes we get so um, convoluted in our own space of how do we get there? How do we do it? But rather, who can I bring to the table to have a collective conversation of sharing of ideas to be able to meet the needs of the community? By And by those natural conversations, you, you learn and are, are, you, you learn how to be able to, to process those needs, right? To get those resources to the students. So it's really those sharing of visions to empower communities. And so for me, it's really understanding who 
are the stakeholders? Who are the partners that are present in the communities or communities at large? Um, being able to understand the needs, bringing those partners to the table, having those conversations. It's an alignment of visions um, and purpose to the organization to be able to meet those needs of, of, of our students. And so, you know, I'll, I'll bring an example to the table. Um, some of our facilities, you know, they 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 can use some love is, is what I say. <laughs> we have... Um, renowned athletes who come out of our school district. We have phenomenal athletes who are currently in our school district, but how do we empower our students to be able to unleash their hidden potentials in these state-of-the-art facilities um, or firsthand experiences um, in the athletic world? And so, you know, we're in the process of this really big project um, coming to Inglewood. Um, but we can't do it alone. Um, it's a collective effort with our partners where uh, really bringing the resources um, to the hub of our community p to be able to enrich our families. And so it really goes back to those relationships. It's who can you bring to the table to have those conversations? Um, but it's really understanding who you're serving and serving with true heart. Yeah. Um, wow. Wow. Uh kind of left me, left me speechless, right? And Jessica, you don't leave me speechless a lot of the times, but your answer, right? Because I would, I like to use this, and I say this pretty much every episode, is um, <clears throat> I like to use this as a professional learning tool around direct instruction where, you know, asynchronously they're taking, the adult learner is taking time and learning apart so that now time could be this variable to impact learning and practice. And what you said uh, was foundational, right? Around relationships. Uh, a mentor of mine, Dr. Bill Daggett, always used to say rigor, relevance, relationships, but he switched it now to relationships, relevance, and rigor, right? And uh, essentially, um, you targeted, unwrapped, and unpacked equity at its best. If you think about what you're talking about, the alignment of resources, a shared ideas, conversation, empowerment, those are all giving voice back to the community, which is a foundational and fundamental pillar to be able to lever excellence and equity in our communities. Now, um, I'm going to brag about you because this is your this is your. <laughs> This is this is your brother. I don't like the spotlight. Right, right, right. Yeah, you already know, sis. You already know where I'm coming. And this is your brother who is just super proud of you. And I'm throwing this in there because I want I want to be able to have uh, concrete examples of how you levered partners to be able to expand, right? To expand um, the access and opportunity for students and families in Englewood, but moreover the culture responsive alignment to your partners so that the students that you're serving, right? The demographics that you're serving are really elevating in this accelerated manner. So if you can just provide some examples of what that, what the partnerships look like and how you leverage that, including the Olympics. Yeah, no, absolutely. And so um, earlier this year, um, we had the opportunity um, to unveil our first esports center um, at one of our high schools, which is phenomenal. Um, if you know, if you're familiar with esports, um, it's it's a pathway that is is taken off, and there's so much to learn from from esports, from computer engineering to technology to gaming, um, graphic design, and so the ability to be able to bring uh, that type of facility in the classroom to expose our students to to different pathways that they may have not realized are existing, but their talent lives within. Um, I'm a firm believer that talent is universal, access is not. And with that, um, thanks to uh, some of our partners, uh, the our Ooh, going blank, the College Football Playoffs Foundation, School Specialty, and other partners who really made um, this project come to fruition, um, we were able to introduce a 
renovated brand new space, um, eSports Center, state of the art for our students that is now being integrated into our pathways in, in Inglewood and really being able to open those doors and opportunities for our students where it's a safe space for them. They, they, they're students that really truly enjoy gaming um, and there's some hidden potential of, uh, there's hidden potential within them um, where they're artists. Um, they enjoy um, the mechanics of, of computers, but being able to integrate that to what drives them really motivates them and ignites them to be able to say, I know where I want to be. I know where I'm going. This is what I enjoy doing and this is what I love. Now, how do I get to that next space? Um, and so that's where additional partners come in and I'm currently working with, with Intuit and, and, a, and a donor who's, who's partnered with them, a former professional athlete, where they're going to be providing students uh, with scholarships. Um, and with that, it's getting them to that next chapter in their lives. And so we've been very fortunate um, to be able to to afford students access um, where they're able to receive scholarships for, for different spaces, um, but it's preparing them for that next future. Hollywood Park um, hosts, um, I don't want to say annually, but a few times out of the year, um, they'll host um, panel conversations at their, at their sites where students are able to um, shadow um, just various uh, staff members um, within the field um, in different concentrations within careers, whether it's entertainment, hospitality, um, but it's that exposure piece and the ability to be able to um, lean on and be able to see firsthand the work that is being done behind the scenes really gives students the exposure. And so those have been very beneficial to our students. Um, another piece that we've been able to do here in Inglewood is um, support our students um, and really expose our students to our HBCU colleges and universities, um, bringing representatives across the nation to Inglewood. And a lot of our students were afforded full scholarships, full ride scholarships to HBCU colleges and universities. And we're not talking about one, two, three students. There's a plethora of students that were on the spot granted full ride scholarships to our students. And that has been huge for our community, right? It's opening those opportunities and those experiences to say the world, there is possibilities outside of, you know, your, your normal scope of, of space and what is their norm. And at the end of the day, it's, it's been a collective effort. Um, we have the Olympics coming in in 2028. Uh, we're working on a state of the art sports complex, one of a kind in our community. Um, but we can't do it alone. We're doing it with partners who believe in the vision of affording access to our students around athletic um, spaces um, that will not only be open for our students, our student athletes, but also our greater communities um, and our community leagues to be able to unleash that hidden potential at a young age for our students, expose our students to the value of sport to be able to unleash that, that potential with them which will then lead it to becoming um, these athletes that that live within them. So, absolutely uh, amazing. And I remember, and this is to my audience, right? Meeting um, uh, Jessica or hearing about Jessica's work when I was out in California, and this was in succession, multiple people, multiplicity, and I, I'm using that word intentionally. Uh, said the same phrase. If you want to know, if you really want to see someone that uh, has an outreach strategy of aligning resources to give back to kids, that's all I heard. They're like, you have to see uh, Jessica Ochawa, Jessica Ochawa. So when I met Jess, I was like, okay, I know I heard you're the guru of community. I heard that you can be able to make sure kids, you, you were the true Tupac. Uh, making a dollar out of 15 cents, right? <laughs> it goes back to relationships. To be honest, it's just conversations. And when when I when I'm out boots on the ground in the community um, for community events, whether it's district, the city, uh, or events that you're invited to in the greater Los Angeles, it's it's networking. 
and it's getting to understand um, other leaders in, in LA and the work that they do. And it's aligning the visions and it's sharing like, hey, there's a need. Is this something that your organization can support us with? Let's let's jump on a call. Let's have these conversations. And if and if it aligns, let's let's move on it, right? Let's give our students, let's afford our students this opportunity and access. And so it really goes back to having those um, heart to heart conversations of making sure that, you know, if there's an opportunity that is present. Let's let's make sure that our our students are are engaging in that experience. And so I've been very blessed to be surrounded by phenomenal partners in our community who want to give back to our students. Um, but it's not about um, transactional, right? Um, it's about being transformative and being able to scale and sustain the partners that we have to really be able to not only impact our current generation but our future generation. Um, and truly embedding them into what is, you know, the whole child, the whole school, the whole community. And so ultimately at the end of the day, partnerships, there should be longevity in the partnerships that you create um, to truly impact the communities in which you're serving. Um, but ultimately at the end of the day, it goes back to relationships. It's serving with true heart and purpose. And ultimately at the end of the day, not forgetting um, the work that you do and for who you do the work for. And ultimately at the end of the day, it's, it's affording access to our students who are our future generations. I'm, I'm glad that you're bringing in a divergent ideology, right? Because when you hear the words, uh, longevity, sustainability and scaling or, or scalability, you, you hear it from an academic and an operational context. But when we hear about strategically aligning uh, partners and partnerships for outcomes of our kids, the strategy, the approach, the relationships, right? There has to be longevity, there has to be sustainability, and there has to be this level of scalability. Uh, thank you for that, Jessica, because now my audience uh, can really look at being intentional about how they would use their academic or systems broad strategy to be able to around longevity, uh, sustainability, and scalability with what you have clearly articulated in such a lucid manner around longevity, scalability, and sustainability and interface it so that we can be able to accelerate equity outcomes. But as I move into move seamlessly into this next question, because you hit upon the partnership component and Jessica, thank you. Uh, continue to keep that level of vitality around partnerships. I can tell you, I go around across the country and um, the work that you're doing with regards to that uh, is a model. It is a gold standard for us in education. But I want to now get down to this level of specificity, right? Something that is near and dear to both of us. Um, it is um, and a part of the this equity uh this equity conundrum that we face but i don't think a lot of people talk about it much uh because of the fact that you know i think we need to build capacity and i'm talking about education ecosystem or entity capacity around homelessness right we've seen there's multiple quantitative metrics out there that highlight the increase the propensity of increase the percentage of students that fall into that criteria of homelessness, right? And this is around generation alpha and generation Z. So the uh, a professor that, a renowned professor that you and I always love the reference out of the University of Southern California, Dr. Pedro Nogueira. You know, I heard him, I heard him in a keynote speech and this is as simple as it can get, but it is 150% true. If basic needs of children are not met, it will be hard for them to learn in school. Now, let's say we use that 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 grounded sentiment that Dr. Noguera stated, and we're seeing this increase of percentage of homelessness in the AC stage of education with limited resources, because that's what we see in here in education across the country. 
how do we truly address this economic and education quandary? Because it's going to have longitudinal impact in the education space. No, absolutely. Um, and I, I feel more than ever now uh, it's crucial um, that our partnerships at large join forces uh, with the local school districts uh, because there's a need. And so ultimately, at the end of the day, we all have a collective resource and service that we can provide our students. And so how do you do that holistically uh, and intentionally uh, to be able to meet the needs of our students? And so there's a lot of great programs, um, a lot of great resources that are available to our students, um, whether you're looking at um, after school programs before and after school, it's a safe space for our students um, to be able to meet those basic needs for, for our children, um, those additional um, time that is being spent in school. Um, there's a big push around community schools. Um, really be able to leverage um, those resources and support, not only for our students, but for our families at large, um, whether it's through food banks, right, professional development, et cetera. The, the levels of support when it comes to resources is endless. And so there's a lot of great systems that are currently in place and programs that are currently in place. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it's truly understanding what is the need there is the need and making sure that we have the players that we're bringing to the table to ensure that we're giving our families and our students the basic needs to be successful, right? Uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It's, it's, it's a child must, you know, I mean, it's a psychological piece. Um, are their needs being met? Do they have a roof over their, uh, over their head? Are they eating? Um, do they feel safe? Um, and so there's these levels for our students to be able to get to the self-actualization of being able to be successful and be able to see themselves to that next level of, of, of impact that they're making, not only for themselves and their own investment, but for the future investment and their future generations to come. And so uh, Part of, part of uh, making sure that we're meeting the needs of our students is, is every adult plays, plays a role um, in ensuring that the students' needs are being met, but also the families, because we can't forget about the families. If we're not um, building capacity within our families, how are we building capacity within our children? Um, and so, as I shared, um, more than ever, it's, it's very instrumental. It's very crucial that um, we join forces with all of our partners um, our constituents to ensure that um, we're creating those spaces and those resources and an effective ecosystem um, system of support for our students on a day-to-day -day basis. And um, um, this is this is great because if you think about it, right? And I hope you copyright this sentence because it is um, it, it, it is really dead. So what I mean by dense is in a positive context that it should be carried out in every conversation. Every adult plays a role. That is huge, right? Every adult plays a role in this. And that kind of goes back to that whole aspect of community and relationships. But uh, one thing I want to highlight, Jessica, and it is so true, and you, you stated it um and in such an eloquent way that if we are building capacity in our students, i.e. instruction, right, i.e. learned experiences, um, uh, creative, innovative designing uh, of, 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 of engaging learning opportunities for students, we have to, in this parallel context, build capacity in our families. Oh, wow, that is, that, uh, that is, that is so refreshing and is sobering because of the fact that now we're intentionally investing in our constituents, right? When we build capacity, that is a context of investment into our people. And uh, Maslow, now you're getting, the, you're getting out of the research. You want, you see, you're crossing over to my lane now. So. <laughs> no, no, but it's, an, it's important. And so, you know, we just concluded our school year. And so we've been very fortunate to to partner with various partners around financial literacy. 
And, you know, it's it's been a huge success for us, not only for our students, um, but also for our families. And so when we talk about generational wealth um, and how do we elevate our families, um, that, that's an important factor, right? No one wants to talk about finances, right? It's a sensitive subject. And so ultimately, um, how do we build those those financial traits in our children if those conversations aren't taking place at home? And so leveraging those opportunities for our families to engage in um, our students, in addition to our students, it really helps kind of build that capacity, um, you know, for our families in the greater community um, and impacting the future generations to come. Absolutely. You're, um, and again, like I, I stated from the outset, uh, this moving from whole child to whole school, the whole community approach, I think you highlighted three critical tri- um, variables that can be triangulated uh, with regards to a community strategy or an outreach strategy to uh, ensure that families and students are levered. One, empowerment you talked about. Two, you talked about agency, right? And the third one around relationships. Wow. Empowerment, agency, and relationships uh, to deepen and strengthen the uh, partnership, partnership work between schools, communities, and our families and students. But last question. (laughs) The last question Jessica, and, and, and again, I didn't forget you. I'm going to get that song to you, sis. All right. I'm, gonna... hey, I, I, I'm, I'm very curious just to count it. You know, just I'm curious, you know what I mean, as far as what song you would select, as far as what you feel relates to me and the work that I do. So, it might, like I said, it's, it's going to be somewhere that Whitney Tina, I got, I, I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. So, uh, <laughs> but just last question, right? And take it for what it is because people now, uh, education leaders, right? That have come on here. Some of, some, some of the leaders that I didn't think would stay within the kind of, I like to say three word box. They did, but others that I thought would be rule followers, they weren't completely disrupted it. So as I say to everybody, take it as it is. <laughs> what three words do you want our audience to leave today's podcast regarding community to leverage excellence and equity in the AC stage of education? Honestly, um, if I'm going to speak from heart right now, it's you have to love what you do. It's not three words. Um, but you're going to have to love what you do to be able to serve a true purpose. Um, and by doing so ultimately at the end of the day, you're going to be showered with endless blessings, um, every single day. And so for me, it's just, you got to love what you're doing and, and do it with true heart and purpose. You lead with corazón. Um, and by doing so, you know, your rewards are going to be endless. You're going to be um, just blessed with so many blessings, um, ultimately at the end of the day, um, because you're going to create those strong relationships. Um, you're serving with heart and ultimately at the end of the day, collectively, right through your own coalition of, of partners and relationships and your networking, you're transforming and affording access to you. Then that's, what's important. Absolutely. Love what you do. Right. You gave a four word, you gave four words, but then you went in, <laughs> you went in a diatribe, but you know what? I did. I, you you got you to serve with heart, right? It, it's, it goes back to that song, right? It's your sanctuary. My heart is my sanctuary. And it reminds me on a day to day basis to you, you lead with humility, you lead with art, and you, you have to know, you know, what your true purpose is. And to me, it's, it's making sure that we're preparing our students with the proper resources, giving them the experiences and the opportunities for them to be successful. We've lived our lives, right? We've had our opportunities. It's it's our opportunities. It's our responsibility, I apologize, to feed them hope, right? Uh, be able to feel their true potential, ignite, you know, their hidden 
their hidden uh, potential, ignite their purpose to be able to truly become what they may have not seen before, right? And so it's unleashing that hidden potential in our students, and you do that through through those relationships. Um, and relationships are key um, to to the success of any work that you do. So, I appreciate you with that. And you know, you said endless blessings, right? And you know, I can, you know, from uh, an observatory standpoint, third party, you know, the Inglewood community families parents, uh, students, community, um, they should be blessed to have you with what you have, um, what you have led, what you have accomplished with regards to bringing in strategic partners um, to lever equity and excellence, uh, access and opportunity for kids in Englewood. So thank you for that because the endless blessings that they are getting uh, it starts with leadership, and you have some great, great, great leadership uh, out in Inglewood uh, that I just absolutely admire. So I know that community is going to be a major, a major thread. Uh, should have already been, but now intentionally uh, because there's various metrics that support that there needs to be a focused conversation, uh, depth and breadth with scale. Uh, with regards to community and all of the specific threads that we talked about, if my audience, if any of my leaders want to be able to just communicate and touch base with you with regards to a coherent and in-depth equity strategy in alignment to community outreach, how would I be able to get in contact with you? Absolutely. I'm more than happy um, to connect. Um, they could connect with me via LinkedIn. Um, they can send me an email. More than happy to um, respond back and definitely jump on a call to be able to dive those conversations. So you can find me on Jessica Ochoa um, via LinkedIn. I'm currently an executive director of communications community relations with the Inglewood Unified School District. And so I'm super excited to, you know, dive in and have conversations with anyone who wants to really just have a conversation around communications, um, partnerships, community, um, just anything that really entails um, public education, anything that is aligned with the work of impacting students. Um, I'm completely open to just to having that organic conversation and kind of seeing where it goes, right? It's about aligning those visions. Um, but at the same time, it's about how do we uplift and support each other to the work that we're doing um, to really build capacity within the leaders. Absolutely. And Jessica, you made it. <laughs> you lasted on VFE. Now, to my audience out there, uh, here's a little but a pleasure. But a pleasure. But here's a little tidbit about Jessica, okay, that people might not know, but Jessica. Her golf game is a uh, A-lister golf game. I'm telling I you. I wish. I wish. I wish I was a scratch golfer. Almost there. <laughs> oh, see, oh, that's been with ninety percent of the people out there. <laughs> Just hey, absolutely. Hey, every day's a win, right? It's like as we say, we're a day closer to retirement. We're a, I'm a day closer to getting scratched. So. <laughs> Um, one day, maybe I'll be part of the, like the seniors LPGA tour or something. <laughs> well, man, look, I look, I cannot wait to go off with you. Please go easy on me. But Jessica, thank you so much for being on VFE, uh, sister, bestie. It is just a true, true, true honor to have you on uh, VFE. But more importantly, bring this. Uh, I like to say strategy notion around community where sometimes it could be left out of the conversation in the ecosystem. So thank you so much. I will, I will get back to you <laughs> with the song. Don't worry about that. Like I said, absolutely. I know it's been a, it's been a pleasure, Michael. Um, appreciate the outreach. It's been a blessing to be able to be a part of voices of excellence, um, and share just, you know, a bit of the work that I'm doing, um, and continuing to do the work, but I'm not successful. I can't do it alone. And there's individuals like yourselves um, and other remarkable leaders who have really um, been able to, you know, push me to to greater limits. But ultimately, we push each other to greater limits to be able to excel and shine 
um, and impact our, our youth. And that's what it's all about. Absolutely. Thank you, Jessica. And on that note, onward and upward, everybody. Have a great evening.